Hello. In this video, we are going to calculate the solubility of a poorly soluble salt using the solubility product constant. For the first example, we want to look at the compound cuprous bromide, sometimes written as copper 1 bromide. The equilibrium in which we are interested looks like this. So we have our solid compound and in aqueous solution it's going to break up into a cuprous, a copper 1 ion and a bromide ion. So this is our overall equilibrium and one thing we want to emphasize in this particular case is that we get one cation and exactly one anion. And we notice that since we have a plus one charge here and a minus one charge here, we have charge balance because we began with a neutral compound. So what we'd like to do now is to write the solubility product, the equilibrium constant for this particular reaction. And just following on what we know about writing equilibrium constants in general, recall that the products end up being in the numerator and the reactants will tend to be in the denominator. So let's start this. So our first part is to write power plus one aqueous times. So anywhere we have a plus, when we write the equilibrium constant, we write it as a product. Now, naively, what we might do is think, oh, we're going to put the reactant in the denominator. But we recall that there are certain exceptions to that rule. And one of the most important exceptions is in the case where we have a pure solid or liquid compound. Because the concentration of a solid never changes, and the concentration of a pure liquid never changes, there's no point in including them in the equilibrium constant. So there is no bottom part, there is no denominator to the equilibrium constant. In this case, we just have the product ions written on the right hand side. We also notice that if we look in a table of data, we can get the exact value of this particular equilibrium constant at 25 degrees centigrade. And if we do that, we see that the value is going to be 6.27 times 10 to the minus 9. And since it's very much smaller than one, it tells us that we have a very poorly soluble compound. So what we want to determine now is exactly what is the molar concentration of a saturated solution of cuprous bromide. To do that, we make the following assignment. We're going to let X equal the concentration of the cuprous ion, the copper plus one, Now we also notice something is that for every one copper plus one ion that's formed, we get exactly one bromide ion formed. Since the only sources of copper and bromide is the original copper bromide compound. So we also can assign X is also equal to the concentration of the bromide ion. So X is equal to each of these two expressions. Another way to think about what we've just done in this particular step is the idea of charge balance. That we have to have exactly as many positive charges as we have negative charges because we started off with a situation where we had a neutral compound. So here is our assignment. So now we know that we have this particular equation up here. We have the concentration of copper plus one times the concentration of bromide and it's equal to this particular product. So now it's a matter of substituting X in for the concentration of copper plus one, and also substituting X in for the bromide. So what we get is we have X times X is equal to 6.27 times 10 to the minus nine power. Since X times X is X squared, we can write this down pretty quickly. So x squared is going to be equal to 6.27 times 
times 10 to the minus 9. Continuing, we'd like to solve for x, as we typically do in algebraic equations. But let's make one slight modification into the way that we write the right-hand side. And I'm going to do this as 62.7 times 10 to the minus 10 power. Now, you can uh, check for yourself that these two particular expressions are exactly equal. If you have a modern calculator, there may not be any need to go to this particular step. I am showing it merely for the sake of completeness, but it's also showing a way that you can solve if you have a really old calculator or if you have no calculator at all and you need to solve the problem on an examination. So, to solve for x, we take the square root of each side and we want the positive square root because we know that uh, concentrations have to be non-negative. So now we can solve for x and make one intermediate step here also in that when we take the square root of a product, it's the product of the square root. So we have the square root of 62.7 times the square root of 10 to the minus 10 power. Now we can see part of the reason why we've made this particular change. The square root of 10 to the minus 10, we do not need a calculator for. We can do that just by the properties of exponents. And we recognize immediately that the square root of 10 to the minus 10 is 10 to the minus 5. For this, we can use a calculator. And even a very old and primitive calculator or a slide rule would tell us the square root of 62.7 and we recognize that this is 7.92. If we did not have a calculator, by trial and error, we could actually extract the square root relatively quickly. But the key point here is that the, the value x is equal to 7.92 times 10 to the minus five. And we remind ourselves that what is x equal? Among other things, x is equal to the concentration of the cuprous ion. Now, we also recall that we get one cuprous ion for every molecule, using the term loosely, of cuprous bromide that dissolves. So that tells us that the number of moles of copper bromide that dissolve is exactly equal to the number of moles of copper plus one that we end up in solution. So it's immediately this tells us that the concentration of cuprous bromide that actually dissolves in solution is going to be 7.92 times 10 to the minus 5. So we can write this way that the molar solubility of Cooper's bromide is exactly this value x that we get, which is going to be 7.92 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. Since recall that the brackets are in units of moles per liter, which is molarity. I thank you for your attention. Have a good one.